Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back with Aaron and Peak. Now this one's not going to be live comms. Uh, we've been, you know, pretty live a lot lately on the stream so I figure some of the like regular videos would just go with regular commentary after action. Now this first clip, uh, by the way, this is a double feature. It's not featuring the same ship, but in the first clip we're going to be in the Udaji. It's been a while since I've been in a destroyer. It's been a while since I've been in the Udaji. Uh, and we're going to showcase that you don't always need to chase damage to do your job in a destroyer. And do well on the team as well. Uh, sometimes you just got to do your job. And everything will work out for you, especially when you've got teammates. Okay, so uh, first of all, I apologize if my voice sounds a little weird. It is early in the morning. I didn't get this recorded yesterday. I streamed pretty much all afternoon, so, uh, or I streamed War on the Sea, and then I jumped over and, and did a uh, arena mode with Aaron and Peak, and uh, they were streaming. I didn't stream it. But I've been playing a lot lately, man, a lot. And so uh, I don't always end up streaming at all, but... Uh, it kind of leaves me with not a whole lot of time to get my regular videos out. But I post a lot, so hopefully you guys don't mind. Uh, but yeah, we are going to get out here and showcase, you know, a good solid destroyer game that isn't about damage. Uh, this is just going to showcase that a destroyer doesn't necessarily have to chase damage in order to have a good game. And uh, yeah, I, I just... I think it's something that gets overlooked. A lot of people, like, in destroyers, think that they have to go out and put up 200,000 damage a game rather than just do their job. And nine times out of ten, doing your job is going to be enough. Now, obviously, it's nice to get that damage. But if you're getting that damage and, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Neglecting your own job as a destroyer, uh, you're going to lose more of those games than you win. Uh, so hopefully you guys uh, can share this video, get it out there, let let some of these destroyer players figure this out. Um, that you don't need gigantic numbers in a destroyer in order to have a good game. That's the beauty of a destroyer. Uh, but we're going to get out here. We see an Akatsuki right off the bat. We're going to go ahead, torp out ahead, and then torp back because we're expecting them to turn the corner. They don't know I'm here. I am not twist and tracked unlike him. He's got, I've got perceptive, he does not. So uh, he does not know that I'm here. And we put those torpedoes out there and we also use the reload booster because I kind of want to catch that battleship as he's coming around the corner. And again, I'm expecting him to push directly around the corner. So we're going to go ahead and drop these in here. Uh, and the destroyer makes it through the gap. Not really that unusual. And you can see I am trying to drop the torpedoes out there in a position that uh, we can catch that battleship, but also send one in the direction of the Akatsuki. Now, the Akatsuki got touched by our uh, battleship player. I don't remember if it was Peek or Aaron. Probably Peek in the battleship. But uh, look at that. One shot against that destroyer, 3,300 damage. We set up fire. He's hurt. We drop our smoke. We finish him off. Uh, Gnaizno is now coming around the corner. He actually didn't hug the corner like I thought he would, and that means we missed. But we've got a smoke screen, so we might as well use it. Now, the downside is he's charging him. He also gets torpedoes. Uh, and we know that smoke screens are torpedo magnets, right? So rather than continuing to fire at him here, uh, which I could have done in hindsight, um... I thought he was going to just charge straight at the thing. I, I, and by the time I had made up my mind to, to get out of the smoke screen, he had already changed. Now we aim for the superstructure there. We get 1,600 damage shooting his superstructure. No fire, unfortunately, but you can't, you can't get fires every day. Now you'll notice that the enemy Benson is in alpha now. And uh, even though the teams are, are tied up, uh, they've got three ships in the Charlie Cap versus our one destroyer. One of them is a cruiser. We have one person in the Bravo cap. And there are two destroyers near the battleship that's in Bravo. And then there's me out here outside of Alpha. Trying to uh, push this Gneisno back. And uh, we are going to get detected here. 
but it doesn't really matter because he's not going to one-shot us. We can easily get out of detection range because 4.7 kilometer detection in the Udachi, I mean, it doesn't take long to drop out of that. And there you go. His secondaries hit us a few times. His primaries don't even fire at him. Uh, he turns out, rightfully so. I mean, he knows I'm torping him. Why would a destroyer get spotted, guys? Because they're trying to torp you. So you just turn and get out of the way. Uh, it's the easiest dodge in the world, even against the Yudachi at close range. I mean, he had all day to get out of the way. Um, but, rather than chase him across the map, I've still got peak shooting at him. So I'm going to keep him lit. And I'm going to head in towards Alpha. Now, 1v1, a Benson would absolutely crush a Yudachi. It's not even close. I don't have the hit points, and he has a much faster fire rate. However, it's not 1v1. I mean, currently, he's engaged with the battleship. Uh, and that battleship's probably going to die, but he's presumably going to take some pretty hefty damage. Now here we've got the Gneisno in a turn. We're going to aim out ahead of the marker on both of those because I'm expecting him to continue a turn and that would put him out ahead of that marker. And that's one thing a lot of destroyer players, including myself, don't do enough is anticipate what the enemy is going to do. A lot of us just look right at the battleship or whatever we're trying to torp, go right on the line, maybe a little behind. Uh, but most of the time, uh, destroyer players, including myself, I've never uh, said that I'm a good destroyer player, but those torpedoes are tracking beautifully. Peak actually hits him again here, and uh, we're going to be able to take that guy out. But we're also in here. Look, Benson has lost most of his hit points. He is now maybe a two-shot kill. He's less than 5,000 hit points. Uh, we know that Gneisno is turning out. He's trying to avoid him. There's nothing he can do. Those were pretty solid torps. Uh, but this Benson doesn't have a lot of health. Like I said, he's probably a two-shot. Remember, each one of those sections of health that you see on an enemy's health bar is 5,000 hit points. He's got less than 5,000 hit points. He's got about a half of that or a little more than half, so he's probably got 3,000 hit points. And, of course, we hit him for 2,800 and leave him with just enough to get away. And then I fire the shot that should kill him, and one goes low and one goes high. Really, game? That's how you're going to do me. That's how you're going to do me. But, uh, yeah, he also does not run Twist and Track or Perceptive. I don't know why. He's in a destroyer that is literally designed to kill other destroyers in this game. But uh, we come around the corner expecting to, to find him, and he's actually dropped his smoke, which I guess is a smart move. Now, I'm anticipating him uh, being in that area there because his smoke is coming out, but... He's not. He's actually reversing. We can see on the twist and track. Uh, thought I might kill him here, but he's uh, he's actually been in reverse and he's going around the island again. Now it's at this point that uh, Aaron is like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna radar, and uh, he's actually radaring so that he can get a shot at the guy in the middle. And uh, I was hoping to kill this Benson here, but the Benson just playing keep away is driving me bonkers. My shells can't go over the island. We have to wait for the perfect opportunity, and we finally managed to take him out. Now, the Kagero over here is in a world of trouble because you got Aaron over there in the, uh, the cruiser, and he's not going to have a hard time dealing with that Kagero. And uh, even though the Kagero smokes up, if the Kagero's in the same position, Aaron's going to be able to smash him and kill him inside his smoke screen. Uh, and that's something a lot of people don't realize. Just because you go dark in a smoke screen doesn't mean that you're immune to being shot at. Okay? If somebody has a general idea of where you're at and you start firing your guns like this Kagero, then a good player is going to be able to kill you. And there you go. Aaron manages to kill him with a fire. Uh, we're waiting to get this base because we want to take away their only source of income on points. Our team has managed to bring this back. And by our team, I mean me, Peek, and Aaron. <laughs> The rest of the team didn't do much, but me, Peek, and A-Raw managed to pull this one back from the brink. And rather than try to uh, go out there and, and chase these guys down, Peek and Aaron should be able to handle them. Uh, I was hoping that the Vanguard would go in front of the island. He does not. And you can see Peek in the Georgia uh, takes out the Cleveland. And that leaves a 2v1 versus that Vanguard. Now... If you look at the scoreboard, it doesn't look like I did anything. Um, 
I got 12,000 damage and three kills, three yoinks, basically. Uh, but I did the things that needed to be done to win the match. I went after the destroyers that were near me. I finished off low health guys, and I took a base. I took the base that the enemy was getting points from. And between all of this, I also, rather than chase damage on the vanguard, jump into the next cap because you don't know what's going to happen. That vanguard could depth strike peak or uh, Aaron. You don't know. It could happen. Um, and so you you play for the win first and foremost, and Peak goes in and rams the vanguard for the meme, which is hilarious when you think about you know Peak ramming anything because. You know, peak school of ramming isn't exactly prestigious for the right reasons. But, again, we end up with just under 2,000 base XP with 12,000 damage. Why? A solo cap and spotting. Aaron gets 3,000 base, top of the leaderboard. Peak gets over two, almost 3,000 base, second on the leaderboard. Both of them with high calibers. And then me coming in there, doing my job, and being the team player and helping to, you know, secure the win. Now, this time, we're going to be in the Conqueror, and we're going to secure the uh, the win in a completely different way. Uh, in which case, this could go horribly, horribly wrong for our team. Okay? Now, obviously, legendary match, so we've got huge advantages against most of the ships we're going to come up against. And being in the Conqueror, that advantage is the heal. Um... And that stupid HE. Like, that HE on the Conqueror is disgusting. It is disgusting. Make no mistake. Like, there, there is nothing really skillful about the Conqueror spamming HE. It just isn't. But this match isn't going to be all about just spamming HE. I mean, for the most part it's going to be. But you also got to know when to use the armor piercing. And, and properly using the armor piercing in the Conqueror will reward you with some really nasty kills. Like, nasty kills. Uh, I've showed you guys matches before where Yamis and Grosa Curve Firsts and stuff come around the corner broadside on a, on a Conqueror close range and you got the AP loaded, it's death. Like, this thing will hit you for uh, 30 to 40k easy. And that's without Citadels if you give it the opportunity. Now, Aaron is in the Claver. He's pushing into the cap. Peak and I are both kind of swinging out wide, though I'm going to swing all the way out wide. I get a shot here on the Alaska. You can see we're getting a little bit of server lag, a little bit of a pause there. And first shot out on the Alaska, not the best uh, in terms of accuracy, but we still get five hits, two fires. The man has just been punched in the mouth. 14,000 damage. That's what I'm talking about with this being disgusting. That guy is absolutely cru like cussing out his team right now. And there's nothing they can do about it. Vanguard goes out, I get a shot off, front guns hit the island, the rear guns get by. Uh, so we're gonna hopefully get a good hit on that uh, Vanguard as well. I said hopefully get a hit on that Vanguard. Clearly I was wrong. Uh, but you can see uh, Aaron gets a good hit on the Alaska with torpedoes. So that flood's gonna stick because he already put out the fires from us. So I'm assuming he got a flood. It looks like he's flooding. And so that is just going to be insult to injury. And then all of a sudden, I get spotted. I'm like, okay, so we've got a destroyer here too, which makes sense. There's always a three-piece uh, spawn across from us. And this is what you don't want to see if you're in a destroyer. A conqueror come around the corner to spot you. Now, fortunately for this guy, I don't aim well enough. I should have aimed a little further forward. That man's death strike. But no, I aim a little too far back. He's going to uh, take that and not die. We know torpedoes are coming, right? Everybody knows it. Why would a destroyer come out and get spotted? He leaves his smoke screen behind and uh, yeah. Hey, who'd have thunk it? Torpedoed. Easily dodged. We take the front guns and we still don't kill him. The worst dispersion in the world just left that man alive. Uh, but because he already swung out his torpedoes, we don't have to worry about that. He's on fire again, and uh, Pete gets the kill with the Alaska, unfortunately. Um, 
some might say he bailed me out, but he really didn't. He actually just joined to kill because that guy couldn't damage me at that point. If he shoots me with his guns, what is he going to do? Set a fire that I can heal everything back from? You know, that sort of thing. Uh, but, anyway, he's dead. That's what matters. Uh, and Peek is not actually going to be long for this world. I don't know what happens to Peek in this one, but Peek actually gets ruined at some point. I think it's a battleship that's right there in the mid, uh, right there by Bravo. You can see, I think that battleship actually crossfires Peek. Uh, which is... It's something that happens to Peek, Aaron, and I more than, more than it should. Because it's not, it's not a bad play if you've got a crossfire on somebody. But if you look, I mean, that, that battleship and destroyer at mid should be fighting the guys that are at mid capturing bases. If you look on the map right now, our team has complete map control. We're about to capture Charlie. We just captured Bravo. We're about to capture Alpha. Like, that's three caps to none. That is complete and utter domination. Get it? Okay. <laughs> but I don't understand why people give up so many caps. Like, you have to make a stand at some point. Have to. You have to try to make a stand. Uh, the Vanguard in Alaska over here, that Alaska tried to make a stand, but the Vanguard took off and left him. But here we've got a beautiful shot at the broadside of a Vanguard. We absolutely smash him. We get four full penetrations, three shatters. We set a fire. The Vanguard got touched. Um, and he has put out the fire. And anytime you're fighting a Conqueror and you put out a single fire, you should just stop playing at that point because the inevitable is that you're going to immediately be set on fire again. Now, he does slow down to his credit and actually avoids that next salvo. Uh, I was anticipating him just continuing to sail in a straight line and he threw on the brakes. Um, Peak has doubled back, as you can see, and that's because he just got smashed by that uh, Yamato over there. Uh, but he gets a good, very good salvo at the broad side of that Vanguard. We put another shot out there. Somebody else is going to shoot at the uh, Vanguard, and the Bismarck actually takes down the, the Vanguard. Now, with this Yamato out here in the middle, uh, we're going to be in range to spot him pretty quickly. He's going to keep us spotted uh, before we can actually spot him, but there you go. He is spotted by our uh, teammate, and so we're going to take a shot at him. Conquerors versus Yamato's. It's a very give-and-take relationship because Yamato has every ability to absolutely smash Conquerors. Like, there's no no ship in the game that is more prepared to, to remove Conquerors than a Yamato. But, in that exact same sentence, you can look at it and be like, well, uh, there is no ship more prepared to remove a Yamato than a Conqueror other than destroyers and uh, you can see the amount of damage we're getting with the HE uh, plus he just damage conned those fires so we're gonna be able to set some permanent fires here hopefully in the next salvo a lot of people take that damage con ability in the their perks and that actually reduces the immunity time so it's not 30 seconds anymore and then it goes down to being like 15 to 20 and you can see how much damage we took yeah we're slightly over angled but there are nine penetrations just a boatload of damage and we get the permafire so absolutely smashing him and that's what the danger of the conqueror is if you're in a battleship is not only does it hit you for 10 to 15 thousand damage with good salvos of he but it also sets fires on top of it and uh yeah uh yami hits us again but at this point we can trade that we have the heals I'm not worried, and we get another fire on the Conqueror. So he's burning twice. He's got low health now. Uh, we've lost Peak, but the Bismarck's closing in. We've got a Clubair in mid. Uh, Aaron is actually low health at this point. Uh, so he doesn't really want to get into the fight with the Clubair solo, which I can't blame him because the Clubair is disgusting in his own right. Yamato gets the fires put out, and then I just reach out and touch him with the HE again, and we finish him off with another fire. Uh, not a whole lot he can do there. Now, to his credit, this, uh, I don't know if it was Aaron getting a torp on him or what, but this Clubair actually took a, a lot of damage since the last time we saw it. Um, but it's still more health than our, uh, Clubair has in Aaron. Um, and so we don't want to trade 
destroyer for destroyer. I'm going to come in and try to help, and if uh, Aaron can spot him for us, we'll be, uh, we'll be able to remove him, hopefully, pretty quickly. Now, at this point, it's actually anybody's game. Uh, we have the lead in points, we have the lead in ships, so this should be our fight. But as you can see, the guys at Charlie have been overrun. They're going to be able to get into that cap and start capping. Uh, they've got a three-on-one over there. And so we're going to try to use our three-on-one on this Clover. Uh, I take a shot at the, uh, you know, blind fire, just trying to see if I can catch him because he spotted us, which means he came past the island. So I know he's here. And uh, because we take that shot, we're not actually going to be able to shoot him right away. Now, he does disappear, so you can kind of get an idea of where he's at in relation to me. And you can see there he is on the island. Uh, I didn't think he was going to swing out, but he actually does, and we're kind of waiting for an opportunity. Remember, because we we take that big seven skill, uh, I take the shot, and I realize it's Clavera. I need to aim a lot further forward. It's very difficult to hit Clavera's, but uh, there we get one hit on him, unfortunately, getting really bad RNG for that uh, dispersion. Uh, we've been hitting five, six shells per, per salvo, so I can't complain that we get one or two that just isn't as good. But, uh, Flaubert is just going to hang out. He's spotted. He's not going to be able to get away forever, and we smash him there. He does go dark once again, which is un unfortunate. And I am anticipating torpedoes coming in my direction. But I was really hoping that this uh, Bismarck would spot him again. Uh, Flaubert is going to get out of there. I think he's going towards Alpha. I need to go over here and try to win this side for our team. Get these guys away from being able to crossfire us. Uh, the Bismarck is going to have to handle himself. Now here, you can see Turpitz. I thought he was going behind the island, but he actually beaches. And that's going to leave me a beautiful shot. And uh, this is going to hurt Turpitz. That's pretty solid RNG, mostly horizontal. We're hitting that superstructure area. We get a solid result out of it and get a fire. Uh, he's going to damage Khan a single fire again. And this is something I, I say all the time. You cannot damage Khan a single fire in most situations. You just can't. If you're going to be shot more with the high explosive that sets you on fire, guess what? All you're doing is actually shooting yourself in the foot by putting a single fire out. So we take another shot here, and surprise, surprise, no fire, actually. Uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. And for me, more often than not, this is why fire builds for me is just frustrating. Uh, now, he he misses the torpedoes that Aaron sent at him. But Aaron is keeping him spotted. Here we're going to be able to get a shot once he once I can guarantee the hit. Uh, we look at the the ship. There you go. This is armor piercing, folks, and this is a perfect time to use it when somebody is broadside on and we absolutely touch the man. Uh, and of course we're going to keep that armor piercing loaded because he's still broadside. Now the conqueror doesn't have very good penetration angles. It's kind of like the Germans in that right. Now we lose our Vladivostok to the Turpits in a close quarters fight. And uh, Turpitz still broadside. He's not long for this world. That looks much better. And down he goes. Giving us our high caliber and our second kill of the game. Now we have 140,000 damage done. Uh, almost 150. But uh, the Suja is uh, definitely not prepared for the absolute nastiness that is Conqueror AP. He, I don't know. He's backing away from uh, our Clavier's shells. He's shooting at the Bismarck, I believe. And he's got me spotted with a plane right now. Like, I am spotted with a plane. And he is still thinking about backing out in front of me from this island. So we're going to go ahead, swing out to the left, get all of our guns ready. And uh, I don't think anybody needs to, to uh, you know, I think everybody can guess how this is going to go. Broadside Suja, four kilometers away from a British battleship with armor piercing loaded. And goodbye. <laughs> that, that was never going to work in your favor, Sunshine. Now, obviously, he torped. We are going to take some torps, and quite a few of them, actually. Um, but, at the end of the day, this is a conqueror. And uh, we are going to be able to survive that, because we, uh, A, have the big heal, and B, We've preserved all of our hit points at this point. And so we end up finishing this game with 172,000 damage done. Uh, the game's not long for, from uh, being over here. Uh, Aaron and I are both heading into the cap here. 
and assuming nothing changes, we should easily win this. There's a cruiser over there to fight the Club Air. There's the Bismarck and Sinner, and honestly, the, the Bismarck has a really good chance to take him out, and does. The Club Air screws up one too many times, plays around with it, and the Bismarck makes him pay. But uh, 172,000 damage, Confederate, high caliber, and a dev strike. Top of the leaderboard, just under 3,000 base. Aaron coming in second on the team. Uh, and Peak, unfortunately, at getting countered by the Yami, ends up lower than that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, punch the like button. Leave the comments below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.